assalamu alaikum dear students welcome back to learn daily physics and today you can see that we are going to find out relation for this page number 28 and f chain curved v and curvature v toroidal drift we also call it a toroidal drift uh, a drift for a toroid we are going to find out today so let's see that what is a toroid first we will look at uh, what is a toroid this is a toroid and let's have a general look on a toroid so move toward this so you can see on your screen let me turn off the lights now you can see clearly that uh, this is a toroid okay uh, this diagram you can say this donut shape is a toroid how a toroid actually made up of, of toroid is made made up of a conductor so just like a coil a chalk inside uh, a energy saver if you have seen you open your energy saver you will find out an inductor like this okay this is an inductor a coil and we call it a toroid because a conductor this a copper wire or any high conductive material is you can say is twirl around it so when the current passes through it it produces a magnetic field and the magnetic field line inside are curved okay it will be curved like this you can see if the direction is this word you can see this dotted line this arrow the magnetic the induced magnetic field lines will be curved okay so this is a this is an inductor or oh, you can say this is a toroid toroid this is also a toroid okay so you can see a lot of images on google if you google them so you can find out this and now i think you have understand what a toroid is uh, how it is how it look like okay so let's move to word of a lecture now so moving to word of a lecture i should have turned on my lights so where are they here it is so this is a toroid and in the toroid have some center or not we say it have some center or not from the curve magnetic field these this is the curve magnetic field lines i've showed you how how it forms a curved magnetic field lines so these curved magnetic field lines you can see that this is f okay we are going to use this f and now we are going to use terminologies v perpendicular we are we in the in our previous lectures we used v perpendicular not v parallel today we are going to use v parallel why we are going to use v parallel we will have a look on that so let's elaborate this diagram first so this diagram states that that we have a curved magnetic field like this okay we have a uh, let's say we have a toroid first where is my duster so let's have a look that we have a toroid like this okay and a wire is it's wired like this okay okay i have a toroid inside of this toroid it will generate it will induce magnetic field lines which will be like this okay direction will be like this direction will depend upon the direction of current flowing through it but let's say this is the direction okay they are moving anti clockwise for example so they will have some distance from the center which we called r not okay now let's say that uh, the cyclotron we we have said that when it is produced when a charge is placed 
I have shown you the animation before that when the charge is placed in the magnetic field a charge comes from this way and when it comes it perform gyrations this is positive charge and it comes and it perform gyration it move in a circular motion and displaces along the along the axis of applied magnetic field this is the applied magnetic field lines so now our magnetic field lines are curved okay these were the straight these were the straight magnetic field lines now our magnetic field lines are like this okay now our magnetic field lines are like this okay so in straight it was moving in a in when it was straight like this it was moving like this now because we have this curve so our cyclotron will be our cyclotron or we can say that our gyration will be like this okay our charge will move like this inside of the toroid okay it will move like this so this is the motion of a it's moving like this and you can draw the arrows and it is the charge is moving like this and it is r not okay so now we know that there is when a charge moves in a circular there is a magnetic field lines moving circular forming a circular and overall this charge is moving in a circular path we can say that from here to here it is moving in a circular path so when it is moving in a circular path two kind of acts two kind of forces are acting on it okay one is reacting force one is acting force and a reacting force action and the reaction action force is when a particle moves in a circular let's say a particle is moving in a circle okay suppose this is a circle it, it don't look like a circle but suppose that it is a circle so when it is moving in a circle so there will be a two kind it, it have center this is a center o so it will have two kind of forces one force f toward and the other force f will be outward okay understanding or not this force is called centripetal force and this force is called centrifugal force okay the force here we have is a centripetal or centrifugal from this diagram now you can see that this is a centrifugal force so we are having this centrifugal force so as we are discussing about the centrifugal force let's have a look that what is v perpendicular and v parallel because we are going to use v perpendicular and v parallel so let's say this this was the center o and uh, this is r not okay this was the center o and this is r not so if this is the direction like this so let's make a curve and this is let's say r not okay so it will have two kind of velocities one along this which will have a perpendicular angle with this one and the other one will be parallel to this okay one with one parallel okay this is the direction of r and one is perpendicular to r and the other one is parallel to r the parallel to r is called v parallel where the tangential or the v per perpendicular vector is called v perpendicular okay now you have understand what v perpendicular is and v parallel is because it is not it will have some component parallel component and the perpendicular component so this is v parallel which is along the centrifugal force the force we are discussing f is equals to m a m d v perpendicular by d t okay this will be m d v perpendicular by d t so for this case for the first case we will talk about the parallel velocity okay so that's why we are having a parallel 
velocity here the parallel component of the velocity but when we have a look on this here we have a perpendicular velocity okay so let's move on and see that f is equals to this is the formula for the centrifugal force you can see right here that this is centrifugal force okay mv square over r and we are describing our uh, unit vector for the direction because this is a vector and this is its direction and direction is along r naught axis and i've shown you r naught and centrifugal force are parallel to each other like this okay so now you can see that f is equals to mv perpendicular over r i brought this r unit vector is equals to we know that r unit vector how i brought this so we know that r vector is equals to magnitude of r into r unit vector okay magnitude of r into r unit vector from here r unit vector is equals to we can say r vector divided by r okay so uh, for unit vector i place this equation okay and uh, it gives me this okay so now i know that we have already in our previous lecture in lecture number 11 we have derived this uh, center guiding drift velocity this is the topic from the center guiding drift velocity v drift is equals to e cross b over b square so multiplying q above and below so we know that this is a cross product so q will be multiplied with the only one vector so q e cross b because q is a scalar so our q b squares this q e is equals to force okay f is equals to q e here so we will uh, replace this q e by f this is the equation then we will put the value of this centrifugal force from this equation as f here and multiply this cross with b now we can see that here we can see that uh, these are as a scalar and r naught is a vector so vectors are taken out and scalar are separated so we have our equation of v of r like equation number one we will name this as equation number one now moving on our second case this is above equation is the relation between the curved drift this is because of the curved drift i've told you the magnetic field lines are curved and because of these field lines uh, we have a curved field okay now suppose a uniform current flowing through a toroid now we said that a uniform current is flowing through that toroid and because of that uniform current according to boyd severett law we will have a uniform magnetic field lines or uniform magnetic field okay void separate law this is a void separate law and so we have studied this in electromagnetism uh, david Seagrift. i think it, this is the book of david Seagrift and chapter number five you can go and look chapter number five for the void separate law and in that you can get this equation so this is a boyd severett law and from this boyd severett law we can relate that the b have this relation with r naught the relation between the radius and the magnetic field is this okay then we will take out the derivative of this this derivative uh, with respect to r you can say we are taking the gradient of this ve vector okay when you will take the gradient of this vector this will be like this gradient uh, if you have seen my previous lecture i've told you that del of b uh, if we are taking this with respect to r it will be partial b by partial r and as uh, it is equals to 1 over r uh, b is equals to 1 over r it r will go upward in uh, in the numerator it will become r naught minus we can say partial by partial r when we, when we when we are going to r naught here because we are taking the gradient so when we will take the derivative of this it will be minus r naught minus 2 and this will be low, go in the denominator and it will become r naught square okay and here we will have a unit vector 
or not okay so this is how the gradient comes and now what we are going to do we are going to again we are using the previous relation uh, we are putting this r unit vector is equals to r vector divided by its magnitude so using this we get this equation from this we are going to separate 1 over r not square over 1 over r and uh, r unit vector putting this relation here putting this relation here this 1 over r not is equals to b so we put this 1 over r not as b here so we will have an equation number 2 you can rearrange it but it's enough for us for our next derivation that uh, this is our equation number 2 so for the curve field we have derived in our previous lecture for the curved field this is 1 over 2 r perpendicular for a non uniform magnetic field we have we have find uh, a curved center guiding drift velocity for that uh, let me show you what was the topic so non uniform here it is the topic okay 2.3.1 the topic 2.3.1 so this is the equation 2.24 we already drive this in our previous lecture so this is the equation we are going to use now we are going to put the value of this del dot b we have find okay putting this value here and separating the cross products we will have this equation separating the cross product we have a negative sign here so this negative sign uh, comes from the here and this negative sign goes out when we change the direction we know this is a cross product and b cross r not is equals to r is equals to minus r not cross b not so replacing their place negative sign will be over and now we have v del b as this equation 3 so now we have derived everything what we have to drive okay so what we are going to do is for the toroidal drift adding equation 1 and 2 this was our equation number 1 and this was our equation number 3 1 and 3 so when we are going to add this v of r and this v del b so we will find out that these here in this equation all of the factors are common except this v parallel here we have a v parallel square and here we have a v perpendicular square you you might be thinking that here it was the v perpendicular and here it is the v per 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 perpendicular square how this v perpendicular square comes let me tell you that that we know that v is equals to v is equals to v perpendicular is equals to r perpendicular omega c okay now putting the value of r perpendicular is equals to v perpendicular over omega c putting this value of r perpendicular in this equation we will get this v perpendicular omega c b over b square r naught and this whole equation so from this we get a v perpendicular here v parallel square here and v perpendicular square with a half sign so all of these common factors are taken common and taking them common we have our relation final relation which is equal to this term and which we have to prove for our solution so let's have a look in our book but which they have proved the same exact thing which i proved so they called it rc it was rc i named it as r naught okay so this is the relation and uh, they proved and i also proved them so this is the relation you can see the final relation we have got so thank you very much for your time and if you like the video you've enjoyed it so give me a thumbs up and comment if you have any problem so appreciate me there and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum.